dear students i think all of you have gone through the last session let us start the second session on signal flow graph to start the session you must know the terms which i explained in the last class that is you must know about forward path forward path gain feedback path or a loop and its loop gain and two non touching loops and also i briefed in the last class about meissen's gain formula this formula is used to find the transfer function of any signal flow graph today let us discuss how to use this formula to find the transfer function of a signal flow graph let us take one problem find the transfer function of the signal flow graph shown so this is the problem given first you mark the nodes like 1 2 3 4 5 6 there are six nodes in the given signal flow graph immediately next step is identify how many forward paths are there forward paths means the path starts from input node ends at output node when you are traversing in that path you should not repeat the nodes and you should not move against to the arrow so this is one forward path from input node to the output node further you don't have any forward paths because if you move like this you will be moving opposite to the arrow so in this particular problem there will be only one forward path when there is only one forward path then k value is equal to 1 in the meissen's gain formula so in this formula k value is equal to 1 the number of forward paths is equal to 1 so according to meissen's gain formula overall transfer function can be written as p1 delta 1 by delta when k is equal to 1 if k is equal to 2 p1 delta 1 plus p2 delta 2 by delta so now for this particular problem since k is equal to 1 it is equal to p1 delta 1 by delta this is the transfer function formula now you have to find what is p1 what is delta 1 and delta here p1 represents forward path gain p1 represents forward path gain so this is the forward path this is the forward path the same thing is written here so if you multiply all the branch gains if you multiply all the branch gains that gives forward path gain so g1 g2 g3 g4 multiplied by 1 gives the path gain of this particular forward path this is p1 now you got p1 now i should find delta 1 and delta to find delta 1 and delta you have to identify how many loops are there in the given signal flow graph so the same graph is written here i let us identify how many loops are there the loop originates and terminates at the same node and no node is repeated in that path suppose if i take this it starts from this node ends at the same node so this is one loop which is called as self loop this is also a loop this is also a loop this is also a loop so when you are identifying a loop you should not repeat the nodes at the same time you should not move against to the arrow so you are not moving against to the arrow not moving against to the arrow so in this particular signal flow graph we have four individual loops after identifying the loops now you have to find the loop gains of that those loops i will take this as loop l1 this as loop l2 this as loop l3 this as loop l4 let us find loop gain of these loops what is the loop gain of loop 1 minus 1 what is the loop gain of loop 2 multiply these two g4 into minus 1 g4 into minus 1 gives minus g4 again loop gain of loop 3 g3 g4 minus 1 multiply loop gain of loop 4 so where l1 l2 l3 l4 represents 
loop gain of individual loops. Here, just for your reference, I have written so loop one belongs to node one, node two. So loop one is connected to node two. Loop two, this is loop two, is connected to nodes four and five. Loop three is connected to nodes three, four, five. Loop four is connected to two, three, four, five. This is just for your reference. Uh, written. Next step is now to identify number of combination of two non-touching loops. Now in this signal flow graph, you have to identify which are the two loops which are not touching each other individually, not touching each other. So this is L1 loop. This is L2 loop. L1 is connected to node 2. L2 loop is connected to node 4 and 5. So these two are non-touching loops. I have written separately here. So they are non-touching. They are not touching each other individually. This is one combination. At the same time, L1 and L3. So L1, L3. This is another combination of non-touching loop. So if you want to check, you can check it here. L1, L2, you see here. L1 is connected to node 2, L2 is connected to node 4 and 5. There is no common node here. Correct? Hence, L1, L2, they are not touching each other. Similarly, L1, L3, here also node 2 is here, here 3, 4, 5 is there. So, no node is common here. Hence, L1, L3 is also not touching each other. Suppose, if you take here L2, L3, which is a node common here, 4 and 5. So, L2 and L3, both are touching here. Hence, they are not non-touching loops. They are not non-touching loops. They are touching loops. So, you have to identify only non-touching loops. One combination is L1, L2. Another combination is L1, L3. Next, you have to find the loop gain of these non-touching loops. So, loop gain means multiply these two. L1, L2 multiply. L1 you have, L2 you have. Multiply these two. That gives loop gain of first combination of non-touching loops. Again, second combination, L1, L3. Again, L1, L3 multiply. We get uh, the loop gain of second combination. So, like that, you have to identify number of combinations of two non-touching loops and also its gain. Next, you have to find the three non-touching loops. In this particular problem, you don't have three non-touching loops. Suppose if you have three non-touching loops, you have to consider that also. So suppose this is L1, this is L2. If you have another loop here like this, another loop, if I take this as L5, then L1, L2, L5. This is called three non-touching loop. Three loops which are not touching each other. But this is not there in this particular problem. Then after finding that, we'll come to delta. So you know that according to Mason's gain formula, P1 delta 1 by delta is the transfer function. Already we found P1. Now come to delta. Delta is equal to 1 minus of sum of individual loop gains plus sum of gain products of all possible combination of two non-touching loops minus sum of gain products of all possible combination of three non-touching loops. So here, let us see how to substitute the values in this formula. 1 minus of sum of individual loop gains. These are the loop gains, individual loop gains. We will take sum of these four. L1 plus L2 plus L3 plus L4 value. This is first term. First term plus sum of gain products of all co possible combination of two non-touching loops. We have only two possible combination of two non-touching loops. One combination is L1, L2. Another combination is L1, L3. So we have to sum these two. So L1, L2 is one combination. L1, L3 is another combination. You sum both. If you have one more combination, you add. Next, uh, you don't have three non-touching loops, put zero. Then substitute all the values of L1, L2, L3, L4 and also this, you get the value of delta after simplification. 
so you got p1 you got delta next you have to find delta 1 always delta 1 is found after finding delta delta 1 is very important the meaning of delta 1 is it is the value of delta which is not touching the first forward path means delta 1 is found similar to delta but when you are considering the loops here those loops should not touch the first forward path so delta 1 is the value of delta which is not touching the first forward path how to find delta 1 come back so to find delta 1 so this is your forward path for this forward path you have to see which are the loops which are not touching so for this forward path all the loops are touching so for this path this loop is touching here this loop this loop this loop all the loops are touching that means there are no loops which are not touching this particular forward path when you don't have loops then this term becomes zero when you are finding delta 1 because these terms are nothing but gains of loops so since you are not at all getting the loops itself hence this terms become zero therefore delta 1 is equal to 1 minus 0 is equal to 1 suppose in this graph if you get one of the loop which is not touching this path then that loop must be considered here that loop gain must be considered here then delta 1 becomes 1 minus of that value so since you are not getting loops here which are not touching the first forward path this value becomes 0 so 1 minus 0 becomes 1 so once you get the value of delta 1 delta and p1 those three values substitute in this transfer function and simplify that is what we have done here substitute the values of p1 delta 1 and delta in the mason scale formula that gives the transfer function of this particular signal flow graph now to if you go for another problem then you will understand how to get the value of delta 1 delta 2 if there is non touching loop which is which is not touching the particular forward paths we'll solve next problem then you will understand very well how to get the value of delta 1 delta 2 etc if there are some loops which are not touching the particular forward paths.